Hey everyone, how's it going? I am MLS Weech and welcome to another weekly episode where we look at book covers and let you vote on what your favorite is. So we just finished up the poll for the whole month of August where the winners for each week in August were put up against one another to get the title for the book cover of the month. And we also finished up the first week of September. So we're gonna look at those real quick and then look at the seven book covers we've chosen for this week's voting. Uh, I am MLS Weech, a self-published author of paranormal sci-fi and epic fantasy. And I would greatly appreciate it if you like and subscribe to this video. And if you really want to show your support, click on my author link in the description down below. Look at my books and see if any of them interest you. That would be wonderful. Let's start off by naming the winner for the MLS Weech 2021 August book cover of the month, which is she Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. In my opinion, this was never really close. Uh, the other covers are good, but this cover is just truly exceptional on any level you can, you can name. The font is well chosen. The use of color is amazing. Uh, the composition is good. It's just an amazing cover. So congrats to Shelley Parker Chan. That book will be uh, automatically entered into the 2021 MLS Weech Book Cover of the Year poll, which will happen as soon as we're done picking other covers. One of those covers we picked was the winner for the first week in September. And the September week one winner. Nope, I'm sorry, this is week two, my bad. And the winner for week two is War Priest by Harmon Cooper. I'm going to bring that book up so everyone can take a look at it. This was a really cool cover. It's a nice portrait style, uh, a very cool figure. Uh, I like the color of it. I like the use of the color on the text. Uh, so this is actually the second winner. Uh, I forgot kind of where I was in my schedule, but don't worry. We're going to pick four and put them in a the bracket. Uh, so this is week two's cover. Congratulations to Harmon Cooper and the designer for War Priest. It is a very wicked looking cover. I'm excited to see it. Now we're ready to start talking about the seven covers I've chosen for week three. The way this works is I go through Amazon. I look at the last 90 days, English language, uh, and uh, I sort by uh, date release for sci-fi and science fiction. And then I just kind of scroll down and if a cover jumps out to me, I save it and then I talk about uh, why I think they work and maybe offer a few things that I think might even make it even better. So we have seven covers to look at. The first one we're going to talk about is The Maleficent Seven by Cameron Jordan. And here we have the image in question. Uh, the color is just amazing. I am a sucker for silhouettes and silhouettes. I always say are very polarizing. People either really like them or they really hate them. I'm one of the ones who really like them. Uh, I like the detail in all of these silhouettes. Normally you don't want the bottom of a figure to melt into the ground, but in this case, the, they're doing it on purpose. They're, they're blending these, these figures feet into the ground so that you have room and space for the title text, which is very well chosen, uh, very legible. I really, really enjoy this cover. I think it's dynamic. I think it's energetic. Um, if, if this were back in the days of, of, of uh, when I was reading a lot more heavily, uh, this is the kind of cover that would get me to, to buy it just to, just to read it and see what's going on. I think it's very, very well designed. So the next cover we're going to talk about is Vapor Trails by Joshua Dalziel. Uh, I'm going to bring this up. Uh, you know, I didn't mention what I would do to change the other cover, really because I wouldn't in that case. It's one of those rare covers that I just think are golden. This one is also golden. If it's, it's more simplistic, it doesn't have as much going on. But honestly, it has everything you want to ask for. Uh, legible title text. Uh, um, the, only, the only thing that can happen sometimes is people rank things by size. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's just how people recognize importance. And the fact that the title text for this cover is as big or bigger than the ship kind of creates a, a kind of a mini battle for the eye. And so 
I'd probably bring the font down a little bit, maybe even all the way down below the circle. Uh, it's pretty ginormous. Uh, but the ship itself is very cool. It's well rendered. The the landscape sky skyscape in the background is pretty cool. I think the author text is a little large, but the the way everything's arranged is still very very well done. Um, I like the 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 use of light um, or the rendering of light to add a sense of motion and dy a, a dynamic energy to the cover. So uh, uh, while most sci-fi ship-based stories are kind of, you know, background plus ship e uh, plus uh, title text equals book cover, uh, that means the design of the ship has to be unique, has to look cool. And this does. The next book cover we're going to look at is Gigantic by Ashley Stokes. Sorry about that, my nose itched. So Gigantic by Ashley Stokes. Uh, scopes. Uh, honestly, what I liked about it, uh, I need to reset here. What I liked about it was just kind of a clever use of shadow, kind of a clever use of text. Uh, I'm always pleased when people consider text as a design element. So we have this silhouetted figure. Again, I'm a sucker for silhouettes. And they let it extend this weird tree scope into the title text. I, 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 I'm not necessarily a fan of the actual font that was chosen, uh, but I just kind of think it's a clever little idea. And it actually leads the eye around the design uh, in a pretty effective manner. We have this pulled quote over here or cover blurb, sometimes it's called. And uh, the author text is out of the way. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just a nice, clean, simple design. Uh, I, I think that you're betting on the cleverness of the use of shadow to overcome the simplicity of design, but you know what? It works. It worked for me. The next cover we're going to talk about is The Prism Effect by Jay Wint. And the first thing that came to my mind was just how cool it was, the detail in, in, in having this figure scatter in the little elements. Uh, was real cool. I like the rendering of the shadow under the hood of this uh, main figure. I like the placement of the title text. And I just truly enjoy how everything went together. And I really think it's unique uh, in, in, in seeing how, how much detail was involved in creating this uh, kind of fade away effect or this ash away effect. Uh, I think it's real cool. And uh, a lot of props to the designer. Next cover we're going to look at is Enter Sandman, not by Metallica, although that is a thing. Um, this is Enter Sandman by Cerise Cole, I believe is how you pronounce her name. And if I'm wrong, I'm very sorry. I'm not trying to offend. So again, the color in this is super dynamic. And um, the, the text is hard to read, and that's kind of a demerit. But the, the use of yellows and blacks and reds to create these shapes is really kind of unique. It's a very bold cover where one went simplistic, but I hope this one little trick amuses you and gets you to uh, select the cover. This particular cover says, um, it, 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 it screams at you in terms of color and you can't help but look at it, which is nice. You want people to look at your work. And then you're relying on the people to be interested enough in what's going on. The figure's well rendered. Uh, rendered. There's not a lot of distraction in the background, but it does create uh, a, a, an interesting arrangement of color. I think this cover is gonna be very polarizing to people. There are gonna be people who really like it and people who don't. So if you're one of the ones who like it, you need to go to the link below and vote for it because they're gonna be people who absolutely do not like this. That's not necessarily a bad thing, so long as the people who like it are the ones who truly uh, appreciate um, the technique and how it's used. Next cover we're gonna look at is a, a little more simplistic. We got a few more simplistic covers looking at, and it's not simplistic because it's not well-designed. We're gonna bring it up here and look at it. It's just simplistic in that it's very formulaic. We always have a couple of what I call portrait covers. Uh, this one is beautifully rendered. I love the aesthetic feel. Uh, uh, it, it looks more like a photo. It's probably a composite photo, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with composite photos, um, but, the the way they use this yellow and different shades of the color of the dress this gold 
uh, the way they use that to hold things together and still create enough distinction to be legible and visible, that's super neat. The, the lighting on this model, whether it's a photo composite or a, 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 a digitally rendered individual, it looks so realistic. It really needs to be credited. Um, it, it, it would not shock me to know that they hired a model, put her in an outfit, took a photo, and then uh, uh, edited her into a computer generated landscape. Uh, it would impress me even more if this was a computer digitally rendered human uh, because everything about this figure looks so natural. So that in and of itself, like the little shoe in the uh, uh, design, I appreciate that. I like how everything's put together, it creates a very nice aesthetic appeal, sets a very good mood, and it does a lot of things that book covers are supposed to do. Last book cover we're gonna look at for this week is The Thoughtful Rebel. And so, when you look at this one, it's a little more obvious to me that this figure was digitally rendered. Um, that's not a knock on this cover. It's still a pretty well done digitally rendered figure. Uh, but if I'm comparing the previous cover to this one, the artistic rendering is better. Now, if one was a photo composite and the other was digitally rendered, then this one would have taken more time. In my mind, it would have been easier to find a model and shoot it. Uh, and and, 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 and uh, we call it clean select, where we cut someone out of a photo and put them on top of another one. Uh, that, that would be impressive in and of itself, but it's not as technically demanding as digitally rendering a person. This digitally rendered person doesn't look as realistic as the previous one, but that might be because the previous one was in fact a real person. And you wanna, I wanna make sure I articulate that uh, so that you understand that it still takes a lot of skill to get to this level. Uh, this book is by Sarah Nake and Michael Anderley, who just is a machine when it comes to getting titles released. I don't know how many titles this, this individual has, released out in the world, but it feels like every week he's got a new book out uh, and his cover designers are always amazing. Uh, I was a little interested in seeing one, the way they use these little flares of light, they do help lead the eye around the design, which is nice, but they don't follow any kind of pattern. And when you have light going off in a bunch of directions, you don't know which light the eye is going to see first and what direction it's going to go. And that can kind of create some frustration to the viewer's eye. The figure is very, very backlit. I think backlights are great, but I think it was a little heavy handed in this degree. And it can, light pulls the eye. Light is a very powerful device. So it brings attention. But you go to the hair, you go to the background, you go to light flares. You go around a whole lot of things before you get to the figure in the middle. And I'm not the biggest fan of this uh, uh, text chosen for the title text. Uh, I think it's a little bit, um, a little bit quirky. Uh, I am uh, pretty judgmental of title text and font in general, uh, but I try to leave a lot of room. Uh, I just think this one, the reason I have a problem with it is I don't see how this text fits with a circus kind of feel. Uh, it's still a very, very well technically rendered model subject. The, uh, the placement of everything fits. Uh, even though there's a lot going on in the background, the figure was placed in a manner that, that doesn't compete. And those are all great things. So those are the seven covers for this week. Uh, again, I ask you to head on down below and vote for your favorite. The more people who vote, the more people are out there recognizing these artists and these authors. And that's really kind of the goal. Um, so I hope you'll take a chance to vote. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, remember to like and subscribe so that you see next week's. And always be ready to vote for the uh, book covers of the month when they finish. And without further ado, I want to wish you a happy weekend. And I will see you in the next video. God be with you.